Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Hero Academy. This is uh, another Steam game that is actually a port of an iOS title. I did one of those recently, what was it? Oh, Rigonauts, that's right, anyway. Uh, yeah, so Hero Academy has been out on iOS for quite some time now, as I understand it. As someone who does not own an iOS device, it's a little bit difficult for me to say with any kind of authority, but it is now available on Steam for five bucks. And it's actually from Robot Entertainment, as you can see down here in the bottom right. So this is the same dudes who made Orcs Must Die and Orcs Must Die 2. So Hero Academy, for anyone who's not familiar with it, is a turn-based strategy game. It almost reminds me of like a mixture of like chess and Frozen Synapse kind of. And it's difficult to explain, so we're just going to show you uh, some of the challenges in the game right here. We're not going to go to play, we're going to go to challenges, and I'll explain why. Uh, as we move on here. So there's all these different kind of teams that we can play as. We can play as the Council, we can play as Dark Elves, Dwarves, and Tribe. I think all of these require me to actually purchase them though. But when you buy the game yourself, no microtransactions required. You get the Council, which is like your default group, and also I think if you have TF2 installed, you get the uh, Team Fortress 2 guys down here, who I'll check out in a second. But first, let's just start with the Council. So the way that these challenges work is, well, let's just talk about the actual interface of the game before we do that. But basically these challenges are like you versus the AI. More accurately, it's actually just you versus the board because the AI doesn't actually get a chance to move. So I am the blue team here. You can see I have a variety of units. I've got a cleric over here. Uh, clerics can do damage but also heal teammates. And then we have four knights and you can see things here like there's their HP, 1000. They have 200 physical damage per attack and they get 20% physical damage resistance, zero magical damage resistance. So, our goal with these challenges, actually, I should describe the way that things work, because this is a turn-based action, turn-based strategy game, I should say. Uh, if you see this down here, this is our, like, Trivial Pursuit-style wheel of action points. So every time we do an action, like, say, moving, this takes one action point away, and action points are spread out, like, over your entire team. So it's not like every unit gets one action point, like in a game like Civilization or something like that. Instead, you, as the commander, get five actions that you can do. So if I wanted to, I could do, like five attacks with these dudes but I don't really want to do that and once your action points are done uh, you are finished your turn is finished so in a normal multiplayer game you would just go on to the next turn at this point but because we're doing challenges all of the challenges are like defeat the enemy team in one turn so that is exactly what we are gonna try to do here so uh, we'll just place or we'll just do this here because I believe I've done this one before and I'm pretty sure that the Knights have the ability to do knockback and then we just send them through this like tunnel here and then through to the cleric who maybe can do enough damage to take out this knight in one go. Excellent! So we'll try the same thing again here then maybe we'll move on to some of the TF2 stuff because I think that's what most people are going to be interested in. I've probably got like five hours in Hero Academy so far and it just came out yesterday but don't take that as a glowing recommendation necessarily. I think this game is really great but I also think it does a lot of things wrong that is going to make this not really uh, a game that is going to appeal to absolutely everybody. I totally forget how this level works, but I'm going to try this right here. I guess I only have one action point left after this. I don't think this is going to do it. So now we have the wizards as well. What are they called here? Um, yes, wizards. Okay, so we're going to redo this. Um, we also have occasionally these buffs that can fall down into our uh, wheel down here, or our toolbar. And by using these, it will take an action point, but you can see this right here will permanently increase an ally's power by 50%. So we are going to put that down here on this wizard, maybe, and see if we can take all these dudes out. Let me just take a look at the health here at once. I think this is going to be wrong. I think here's what I think I want to do here. Because like this mode is basically more of a puzzle game than a strategy game. It kind of reminds me almost of like Advanced, War, Advanced Wars a little bit on the GBA. But I think this might be good enough to get it done. Oh my god, so goddamn close. The other thing is there's special squares on the field. So for example, uh, we can move our rogue here, or our archer, and then she will get... Well, let's just move off for a second. If you stand on this, you get an extra 100 attack power. So if we move our rogue here, then we can do some bitchin' attacks that do way more damage. Although it's not really good to send our rogue there because she has a melee attack, which doesn't do as much damage as her ranged attack, as you'll see right here. We could also give her the weapon if we wanted to, so there's a number of different strategies that we could possibly employ here. I'm not sure if these are levels that only have like one possible solution. So far I've actually struggled with these a great deal. I've managed to beat all of the ones for the council, but I haven't even come close to beating all the ones for TF2. So I kind of think it's supposed to go something like this almost. But then again we only have one attack point, and that's not going to be enough there. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> 
Well, this is the problem with me playing puzzle games, isn't it? What if we just give it to this dude and have this dude go? Oh, that's not going to work. Because these guys have uh, physical resistance, but no magical resistance. So actually, I think it might be in our best interest. Ah, oh, that's not the... We want to do it on this guy. To do it like this. But I mean, we just tried this and it didn't work out for the best. Because this should not be enough to kill him. Oh, unless... Can I still... Ah, uh, okay, I've solved it, I've solved it. Okay, give this guy the weapon, and then take these dudes out. And then with our last remaining guy, just hit him with the arrow there, and that'll be enough to kill him. Okay, so that's basically the challenge mode of Hero Academy. I'll show off the TF2 stuff now, because I know a lot of people are into that. And it's actually cool, because, like, the council has, like, five or six different units... You know, you got Wizard, Cleric, Archer, Ninja, who is like your super unit. You kind of think of them as like a queen in chess. Um, and and the basic knight, but in TF2 you actually have access to all the classes, which is something like, I don't know, 9 or something. So you can see here we've got Soldier, Engineer, we've got Medic, Engineer as well. And what, all we have to do is take out this dude in one hit. And I can't figure out which square that he is standing on. But anyway, so what we can do is like spawn a Soldier. And then using our Engineer, if we click on him, we can actually upgrade... I guess that's like the black box. I can't remember. The, it's been a while since I was really into TF2, but we can upgrade the soldier's weapon like that. Uh, we can also use the medic to ubercharge him. And then we can... Oh, we might not be able to attack. Unless we stand on this square and then do our crocket attack. Which might... Yes, it was able to take him out in one hit. Excellent. So the TF2 stuff is, is pretty interesting. I haven't managed to beat this level yet. Uh, but maybe we'll give this a try right now. The TF2 stuff is really interesting because you do get access to all these classes. And it can be nice to kind of have a little extra variety. Like when I play online, most of the time it seems like I'm playing against people playing as TF2 classes. And that's fine because I like playing as the TF2 classes myself. I have no idea if they're balanced or not. But in any case, so I'll just show off the sniper's abilities really quick. Basically, he's got a super high range attack that he can do that if you are very low on health is enough to finish you off. But if you're not, is not enough to finish you off. And also, uh, he can't shoot like outside of his row or column. I guess row because you can't really shoot up and down anyway in this game. Uh, so the heavy's abilities are basically just his like minigun spray, but it, is, it uh, sprays in a cone. So if you're like far enough away from enemies, then you are able to hit three of them at once, which is cool. I'm not sure if you can hit more than three. Let's just, I mean, we're going to fail this pretty miserably because you can see there's still a whole bunch left. Ah, but I forgot that when you are playing as the TF2 classes, you actually gain action points when you step on enemy units. This is called stomping. Basically, you don't need to know this right now, but when you kill an enemy, they actually just become unconscious, Pokemon style. Then you have to go stomp on them in order to actually cause them to uh, be impossible to be revived, which is important. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do there. Anyway, we also have our scouts. Our scouts, when we place them, gain an action point. And so basically, they don't cost anything to place. And also, uh, they do decent damage. And of course, remember, you do gain an action point when you step on an enemy. So we can do some cool stuff like this, although we're going to run out of action points fairly quickly. In fact, that'll do it. I haven't actually beaten this level, but let's let's check out maybe Skirmish, because that's when I have beaten. Maybe I can actually show off the solution there. Okay, so we have Heavy, Pyro, who also has the ability to do damage in like a, an area of effect. I think we'll show that off like here. Uh, I, maybe it doesn't work like that. Maybe if... One second. Let me think about this. If I do it like this, then it should... Yes, do damage in a cone, which is cool. Uh, and we also have Jarate. So let's upgrade our Pyro to the degreaser there. I think that's what that is anyway. And then we'll put this here. Jarate causes you to do way more damage on your next attack. But unfortunately, we have no way to take out this uh, Void Monk now, who is, I think, the enemy super unit or the enemy knight. I haven't messed around with the elves too much. But if we do this, that'll knock her back. Can we then hit people in a cone with this? No, this is not working out so well. Hmm, let me think about this. I don't think this is gonna work. Again, I have to, like, I played competitive chess for a long time, probably like two or three years when I was uh, more of an adolescent. Uh, and a lot of this stuff is, you know, pushing me to the powers or the limits of my analytical powers. Which, for those of you who watch me play puzzle games from time to time, probably doesn't seem like that much of a stretch, but still. Just saying. I guess the, I've never used the Engineer's actual attack. It doesn't seem that good. Okay, so let's upgrade to the Degreaser here. Let's knock... The, oh, no, no, no. Okay. Upgrade. Degreaser. Uh, rocket this dude here. 
Jirate. Okay, that is almost the solution here. But I feel like I need all three of these guys to be in like the same area. Can we do this? Maybe we don't have to upgrade to the degreaser. And that didn't work at all. If we do it like that. No, that doesn't work either. Hmm. Very interesting. Some people out there are probably shouting like, Oh my god, you can't figure this out. Well, I did figure it out at some point, somehow. Smart ass. I think it definitely involves like this. 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 Is that enough? Yes, it is. Okay, now we can solve it easily. Awesome. So the problem was that I didn't need to upgrade my... my uh, normal flamethrower to the degreaser. But anyway, let's do one more challenge with the TF2 guys here because I have succeeded at this one. You can see we've got all the classes on the map right now unless I'm missing something that I can't recall. I guess we have no scout. But anyway, we do have the demo men. Demo men have the ability to do that bottle attack as well. But also, if you're further away, they have the ability to use their grenade launcher. By the way, these enemy crystals are very important. When you play multiplayer games, which we'll show off a little bit later, there's a deliberate reason why I'm not showing those off right now. And that's because I'm going to go on a rant, probably, when I get to that section. Uh, this game is basically multiplayer only. Um, but yes, yeah, there was a grenade launcher there. But the, uh, the crystals are important because there's two ways to get a victory against an enemy. Uh, you can either destroy the enemy crystals, or you can destroy all the enemy players. But the crystals are oftentimes, at least when I've played, the crystals are the, the most common method of victory. So I'm trying to think about how we succeed in this one. I think we just bounce these dudes around, this dude around until eventually he's in a position where we can kill him very easily. Is this going to be enough? Not quite. Okay, so I think it goes like soldier, soldier, spy, spy, spy? Alright, well that'll get the job done. Spy's kind of cool, he's cloaked, but the enemies can see him, they just can't attack him most of the time. Anyway, that's that's that side of Hero Academy, so that's the challenges side. Uh, let's go to the play side now, and I'll explain the actual like multiplayer game of Hero Academy. So without further ado, let's just start a game, and I can show you how this works. And we'll just start against a random opponent. You can also challenge people on your friends list, but it's nice that there is a... Basically like matchmaking or, or quick match mode. And you can select your team here. As you can see, there are three premium classes that you actually have to purchase. I don't know how much they cost. I am not going to purchase them. Instead, I am just going to launch as my TF2 class. And we will find an opponent here. We're just waiting for one right now. And then we'll describe what's going on. So one of the principal problems... I mean, one of the principal strengths of Hero Academy is the fact that it's got a very strong multiplayer component. But this is also a weakness because there is no single player component in this game apart from the challenge mode. I was kind of expecting there to be like an AI, so you could do like AI skirmishes like in pretty much every other strategy game ever made. However, there is no AI built into this game, so if you want to like practice, you're either practicing in the challenges mode or you're practicing online against somebody. There's no AI mode, which is unfortunate, and I'll explain why. It's because this is a turn-based game, so as you can see here, I've got like games where I've, I've completed a lot of games. A lot of these are from Resignations. But I think anyone with a question mark is from Resignations. Or that's from a, a game where we, they resigned before we even picked teams. But in any case, I, I've got like games here. I've been waiting 15, 20 hours for a move. I mean, I've got a game here where I should just move because it's you know been five hours for me. Okay, here's my game. This guy's playing with premium characters, so we're probably screwed here. And he has already started. So the way that things work in multiplayer is that we get like this Scrabble-esque toolbar here. Uh, and then we... Man, this dude is going to attack the shit out of my crystals on the next turn. Uh, and then we, like, alternate going. And the way we do that is spending our action points by, like, placing units. So we can place, like, a heavy here. Move our heavy out here, perhaps. And then we can place, maybe, pyro here and put him on this square or something. What is this square? I've never seen this one before. Teleporter. Allows the unit to instantly move to any other teleporter square on the game board. That seems scary. Uh, and then we can maybe put, like, a spy out here. And just end the turn, I guess. Yeah, we can just end our turn now. So it's cool that you can do this online, and occasionally you like run into people who do their turns very quickly, and you can actually get a, get through a game in like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe even forty five minutes if you're lucky. But a lot of the time, I end up running into people who, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm good at this game because I've lost like eight and one two or something. But when they start to realize that things are going a little bit south for them, they're just like, fuck it, I'm not going to resign, I'm just not going to play anymore. So that, you end up, you know, waiting 20 hours, 15 hours for turns. So remember, this is a port of a mobile game. So I think, this is a game that's been ongoing for like a day now. Oh, Pyro, no! Yeah, he's done. He might be able to stomp him as well to keep me from bringing him back. No, he didn't. Okay. 
Um, this guy's gonna kill me. As you can see in our chat here, I'm like, are you new or experienced? I'm pretty new. New with this team, but I've played since last year. As soon as I saw that, I was like, uh-oh, I'm fucked. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, remember this is a port of a mobile game, and I think this is a game that works much better if you're doing it on the go, so you're not just, like, sitting down at your PC all the time, like, come on, motherfucker, like, DKW is awesome, make a fucking move, I've been sitting here all night waiting for a move. I think it's better if you just carry your phone in your pocket or your iPad or something in your in your bag, and then you're like, oh, so, you know, DKW is awesome, finally took his turn. It's like a scramble with friends or a draw something, you can just play it on the bus, right? It's nice to have something to preoccupy yourself with. Um, but in this form, I find myself just sitting down here like, come the fuck on, take a turn. It was the same problem I had with Frozen Synapse. The problem is, I wish that there was just a fucking turn timer. If there was an option to play like Blitz or something, where every player only had two minutes to take a turn, I think I would enjoy the online in this game so much more. Because right now, I mean, like I said, I have four or five hours in Hero Academy already. Most of that is spent at this screen, waiting for other people to take a move. So we're going to see how this goes here. Might lose our heavy. I hope that's not the... Okay, well, we can bring him back, maybe. We have a medic. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. So we're just gonna bring our medic back here. Heal up our heavy. If I don't heal him again, he's gonna get stomped. He might get stomped anyway. One thing I do like about Hero Academy is the ability... Oh, that's not what I want meant to do. Is the ability to just redo things. Like, if you did... I didn't like that turn, so let's do it this way instead. I uh, can't... Do like this, and then heal our heavy. Heal him again. Uh, he's probably still gonna die, because this Impaler does 300 damage. That's a lot. What if we did this instead, and just put a Sniper out here? Went to town on her bitch ass. No, that's not gonna do it. Has she been upgraded or something? No, wow, they just do a ton of damage. What if we take our Pyro over here? This might work. And we could stomp the Impaler? Yes, because we can't bring the medic in anyway. So we'll just do, and we got an action point out of that. So what we can do is just get our heavy back, I guess, or at least stop them from stomping it, and then end our turn. We might lose our, our pyro in the next turn. Who knows? So I'm just gonna take my turn here against Napster. As we saw, I, I'm pretty much getting screwed here, and then we'll probably end the video because I don't really know if there's much more to say to be honest with you about Hero Academy. So we'll maybe put our scout up here. Man, that spy has a lot of health. I guess the, the scout just doesn't do any damage, which is a problem. Let's move scout over here. Could move him onto the square. Again, don't take this as, like, my strategies, because I am god-awful at this game so far. What if we put this dude here? And then an engineer upgrade him to the black box. Uh, but yeah, in any case, this has been Hero Academy. I think I, I like it. It's only five bucks, which is not so bad, but I expected... Like, in order for this to be a no-brainer purchase, which it could easily be, all there needs to be AI skirmish mode so I can actually practice offline. The reason this would be great as well is because I assume the AI wouldn't take 10 minutes per turn, so I could actually get more practice myself compared to, you know, playing 5 or 6 games online consecutively, but still not really getting that much overall playtime in. And, um, you know, maybe some kind of turn timer or a blitz mode or something like that. I think would really increase the enjoyment of this on PC. I think this would be... Oh, we got one more turn to play here. Let's do it. It does have that definite, like, one more turn, one more turn factor. Um, but I, I feel like it's just lacking kind of like that, that power of keeping you at your PC. I didn't know that this guy does damage uh, in an area of effect. He's doing some serious shit to my um, pyro here. I don't know. We're, we basically lost this one already. I should probably just resign. Uh, but that's no fun, is it? How can we do this better? Is there a better way to do this? I don't think there's a better way to do this. What if I teleport? Oh, so you have to actually, like, actively teleport. What if we put, like, Spy? Moved him onto the teleporter. Teleported. Oh, but then we can't get in an attack range. See, like, I'm, I feel like I'm basically screwed here. Maybe we'll just let that dude die and actually spend that turn, this turn, deploying dudes. Put like an engineer over here. I should get a medic out there as well. Put like this or something, I don't know. Or, I actually, let's... These are respawn tokens, by the way, so I could use this on this dude and just put him back in my inventory, which might be the best decision at this point. And then we'll just move Spy over. Engineer. And, uh, mm. Okay, let me think about this. 
Respawn. Again, there's probably like experienced Hero Academy players right now that are like, what the fuck are you doing? And then Engineer over here. Okay. So we're going to lose a lot of damage on our crystal there, which sucks. Uh, but in any case, yeah, this has been Hero Academy. If you, I would love to love this game more than I do because it seems like a really deep, balanced, turn-based strategy game. However, I mean, and those are right up my alley, like I said, played a lot of competitive chess. However, the fact that there is no way to practice beyond the challenge mode and beyond playing online, you really have to play against your friends, I think, in this game. So that if, you're, if you want to sit down on the computer and actually play a game, you can just be like, dude, come the fuck on. It's been like five minutes. Just take your turn. This isn't like the World Hero Academy Championships. Or you have to be more patient than I am. You have to be the kind of person who's like, you know what? I don't mind waiting 24 hours between turns. Like, I don't mind playing a game of Hero Academy for a month. I kind of do mind that, although I probably wouldn't so much if I was playing this on a mobile device. On the PC, I kind of feel like if I'm booting up this game and I'm keeping this game as my, like, active window, I want to be playing it, and I spend probably 75 to 80% of my time in Hero Academy not playing it, which, you know, for some people, if you're really into deep strategy games, might be cool for you. For me, Definitely not uh, my cup of tea, but still if you're really into the multiplayer component of this I think you can easily get five dollars worth. I've easily gotten five dollars worth out of it anyway So consider this still like a tentative thumbs up or like a, a Mild a lukewarm thumbs up, but it's a thumbs up with like a hint of what could have been behind it Just port in an AI skirmish mode like frozen synapse had and this would be so So much more fun to play at least you could play AI skirmishes while you waited for games like, while well, you waited for your opponents to take their turns, it would be so much better. Add in the option for a turn timer. And this could be something that I could really see people blowing a lot of time on, whether they're playing it on a mobile device or otherwise. But in any case, this has been Hero Academy. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.